Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again, Hudson County View, live and uncut. And your favorite host, the guy with the braids, the broad, and the nonstop motor that just keeps on keeping on, John Arhitis. And we have no shortage of news for you this week, just like every other week. So first of all, the uh, one of the big stories, at least this week, was the new school funding plan introduced by Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop and Ward D. Councilman Michael Yoon. As many of you have read and seen, there was a press conference held on Tuesday, and that presser basically revealed a three-year, again, quarter billion dollar plan that will all go towards the schools between 2020 and 2022. Uh, notably, there is uh, $40 million going towards tax abatements uh, from the city that will now go all towards the school district. That and much more on that plan as we uh, proceed into this episode. We're also going to tell you about uh, Mayor Phillip having a public meeting at a community session at Dickinson High School. And uh, there were some teachers as well as some parents that were not particularly thrilled with the way this situation is being handled, had some strong opinions about an appointed school board. So we obviously want to fill you in about that as well. A very eventful Hoboken City Council meeting last night. At that meeting in the Mile Square City, the governing body approved the Hoboken Rail Yards Redevelopment Plan, something that's been in the works since all the way back to 2008. It looked like it was going to get approved in 2014 under former Mayor Don Zimmer. That didn't end up happening. There was a, a, looked like a late push last year for that to get the okay from the council. And even after the ward council races, there's needed to be some amendments, some changes, but now it's all in the rear view, at least uh, for step one. So we're gonna give you all the details on that as well as the fact that there's some new meter parking rates in Hoboken that were approved last night as they prepare for what like, looks like a big budget deficit, perhaps uh, as high as uh, $13 million, though that uh, will be explained in more detail as we move on with our program. For the time being, though, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The My JCMC app. We belong to you. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, John Arhitis. So as I just said a few minutes ago, we're going to be talking about that pivotal school funding plan in Jersey City. Uh, just to reiterate, that's a three-year plan unveiled by Mayor Fulop and Councilman Young, $250 million. So, uh, you know, Mayor Fulop said at that press conference, we're moving $10 million to share from abatement revenue, and we're making cuts in regards to police recruiting, fire recruiting, overtime reductions, hiring reductions, and I think we have a pretty good grasp on how we're going to get there. On top of that, uh, you know, we told you how there's going to be 100% uh, pilot or abatement sharing from the city to the school, that's $40 million. Some other important statistics there is uh, $55 million over these three years for the payroll tax, $15 million for the sale of the BOE's district headquarters on Claremont Avenue, and uh, there was even talk of a buyout plan which would free up a few million dollars. Uh, they didn't name the number of employees or uh, when that would be offered, but I mean, it did look like that was part of the uh, comprehensive plan, which is again, a three year or 36 month plan. So additionally, they talked about a number of revenues generated from the school district side, such as an operational efficiency correction plan, action plan, excuse me, that the city says would net $45 million over the three years, a uh, school tax levy adjustment to net 75 million, and an energy audit that would net an additional $2 million. So as you guys are well aware, at the beginning of the year, January 3rd to be exact, Mayor Fulop uh, talked about the city council, uh, which five days from that point, January 8th, would be voting on a referendum that would let the voters decide whether or not they wanted the Board of Education in Jersey City to remain elected or become appointed. 
uh, members of the Jersey City Education Association, particularly in the leadership positions, have spoken out against this measure. And uh, the mayor and others at City Hall at the council level have said that this would give full accountability for the uh, elected officials over there at 280 Grove Street. And it would allow them to basically have a better handle on the budget, have a better, uh, both in City Hall and the Board of Ed, as well as them to take a more active role in day-to-day uh, -day business. So for the time being, that is uh, going to be on the November ballot. And there is, Mayor Fulop has said, as he did just on Tuesday evening, that the plan is not to have this be an appointed board between now and the end of time. He says this will be temporary until the budget deficit is corrected. As you guys probably know, uh, the 2020-2021 Board of Education budget is expected to see a $150 million shortfall. And the reason for that being is that uh, funding from the state has uh, dried up tremendously in the past few years. You probably also know that there's an ongoing lawsuit between the school district and the state. And you know wherever that is uh, going to fall, it's going to fall. But I'm sure the outcome of that is not coming anytime soon. So. With that in mind, on the heels of this a big announcement on Tuesday morning, Mayor Fulop again at a community uh, forum that was uh, really organized and hosted by Board of Education Trustee Gina Vertabello at Dickinson High School on Tuesday evening. And he talked a little bit about his position on the appointed board. And he said it's, it's a bunch of nonsense that this is a power grab. And meanwhile, Jersey City Education Association President Rod Greco uh, clearly disagreed. So I'll let them speak to that better than I can. So we're going to play you the clip and then we're going to head to a commercial. Let me speak to that for a second, okay? Because my comments have been consistent on that as well. When this came in front of the, um, the city council, we spoke about the fact that none of us want an appointed board of education. Let me start there, okay? And then this narrative about a power plan. He wants this, he wants that. It's a bunch of nonsense. Why is it a bunch of nonsense? Because if somebody, if I wanted to hire somebody tomorrow, I wouldn't need the board of education to be able to do that. I could work with a councilman tomorrow and solve that problem. It's a bunch of nonsense that there's any advantage to that. When we put this plan forward, we said that we would do it for a finite amount of time to fix the problem if the board of education wouldn't be willing to fix it. From day one, including today, I said that if the board of education acts responsibly, we're not going to have a referendum in November. Responsibly means making responsible choices along the way. That works for teachers, that works for nurses, that works for the taxpayers, that works for students. That's all we're asking for. You'd be hard pressed today to argue that that Board of Education has been acting responsibly. You've been hard pressed to say that today, okay? And if you look at their track record, okay? If you look at their track record, I mean, you have a member living in China, you have three board of members, you have members that have ethics complaints, you have members with legal problems, you have members that have been national narratives around anti-Semitic issues. These are not things that I've made up. Those are facts, okay? The mayor, you keep saying they're acting responsibly, uh, acting responsibly. And, um, you know, I'm saying this, it sounds like a threat. You know, Franklin Walker did just get in that job in January. Okay, yes, he was there since February 1st, but he's now the permanent let the board of ed, let the business administrator, they're working on their budget. I know they're not sitting up there having coffee and uh, reading, uh, you know, reading the newspaper. They're working on it. But as much as I, I've heard you more than any mayor in 30 years scream that you wanted local control. And we all want local control of our school system. The state took over October 4th, 1989. We all want local control. We want home rule. But with that comes responsibility of the municipality to fund the school system. And it shouldn't be a caveat that we can, which in the beginning I could disagree, I believe it was. We can fund, we can help out if I can have an appointed board because I can see who's doing what. It doesn't work that way in Belmar. It doesn't work that way in Bayonne. It doesn't work that way in Woodbridge. It doesn't work that way in Short Hills. Yes, large cities do have mayoral appointed boards. I think it usually leads to chaos with the parents and the workers. You see in New York where Marshall Isles came from, the community school boards, and all the dysfunction that's over there. We have a good school system here. Can it be better? 
Every school system can be better. Every municipal government can be better. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, Retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self-storage. Let us be your good friend. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2734. Hudson County View live at Uncut. John Arhitis here. And uh, luckily, we are joined today, uh, surprisingly, always keeping me guessing, uh, one of our favorite freeholders from Hoboken, Anthony Stick Romano. Stick, how are you? John, thank you for the invitation. Of course, thanks for coming on relatively short notice. Very, very much appreciated. It's getting through between Hoboken, Jersey City, and the Seacock is the traffic. No, Bergen, my God, everything's cl closed and construction. Yeah, well, you know, that's Hudson County. Nothing new there. But anyway, Stick, so uh, obviously uh, we, I was at your campaign kickoff in December and you were hopeful that you would get support of the Hudson County Democratic Organization. As luck would have it, things worked out this time. No repeat of 2014 for you. So um, certainly that must have been a relief. Well, obviously, John, uh, being, I had a tough year last year in different ways and the support of the Hudson County Democratic Organization uh, to me was key and critical. It shows the unity that we have as a team in Hudson County, and I enjoy being part of that team. So um, having the support of so many uh, strong figures that lead our organization uh, is, I'm honored. So as, uh, as you know, you just said, I just said everything seemed to work out. It, uh, you know, it looks like cooler heads prevailed. There was talk of Joe Bronco running, talk of Councilman Mike Russo running. Obviously, neither materialized. but. As the moment, it doesn't appear to be an uncontested race. It looks like Rod Batista, who has run for mayor and, and council previously, unsuccessfully, of course, but, uh, you know, not a newcomer to the ballot. Looks like he has plans to challenge you. He hasn't submitted petitions yet, to my knowledge, but your take on this. Well, uh, John, I always run as if I'm running against a strong opponent. I was taught that by uh, always uh, Bob Menendez, mm -hmm. uh, our senator, and uh, Pablo Fonseca, who had uh, run my... Uh, previous freeholder campaign, that you always take every opponent seriously. You run hard and you run scared, and that's my intention. Very good. And uh, I, I know we talked about this before, but just for those that uh, may not recall, and just if you could update people on why you thought that you needed at least one more term to get uh, some of important initiatives on the county level done. Well, you know, uh, so many things are going on, so many good things are going on uh, at the Board of Freeholders in conjunction with uh, our great county executive, Tom DeGeese, are trying to accomplish. Uh, we want a, uh, a dream I've always had since uh, 
becoming a freeholder was the police and fire academy. And hopefully uh, sometime in the near future that'll be a dream come true. Uh, we're already uh, moving on that direction as far as the location and the, uh, you know, the beginning of the project, uh, renditions and, uh, and um, uh, you know, the ground, uh, checking of the ground and all the other things that need to be done before you can do construction. Sure. And also the new criminal just justice facility, the Guarini Complex, which is uh, going to be built, uh, replace our antiquated uh, facility at 595. Uh, the continuation and growth of our park system and uh, just there's so many good things going on. Our uh, schools, our high tech, our uh, county prep, and our Hudson County Community College are very highly rated as educational institutions, and we want to continue to see that grow. Um, and just seems to be a lot of uh, things that need to be finished and completed. All right, very good, Stick. Now, on your home front, uh, right in the first ward in the Mile Square City, the uh, council approved something last night, the Hoboken Rail Yards Redevelopment Plan, something that you know has been in the works since 2008. There's probably been about a dozen iterations, probably even more, because it's been 12 years. But uh, finally, it looks like this is something that'll be a reality. This new uh, Warrington Plaza, this new uh, three-site plan on 80 acres of MJ Transit, uh, real estate, and of course a prime location. So your take on this thing finally getting wrapped up, at least on the council level. I feel that it was a great accomplishment by the mayor and the council. I believe that this length of delay has causing the residents of Hoboken to suffer because of all the good things that are going to come out of this development. I see that uh, along with the Hilton Hotel, when hopefully they finally break ground, and hopefully someday the Rockefeller uh, site uptown and uh, the Academy site also, that these developments will be within reason, but and importantly, that Hoboken needs this to happen. The areas that are being spoken of are vacant, and you already have parkland being built, the uh, big co complex that's going on, uh, the old chemical site. Um, you also have uh, the, the other park at the other end of town. So we're getting our park space, and I think now it's time to get these projects completed and a mix of commercial and residential. Obviously, we just don't want to see, and it won't happen, uh, you know, huge towers for residents. I think it's going to be a, a, a mix, which is important. So it's a little something for everyone. And it has to be a compromise. And this was an important first step because in Hoboken right now, businesses are suffering. As you know, vacant storefronts, um, a lot of the, the nightlife business had shifted to Jersey City. So we need to regain that spark, and I think this is something that puts that in the right direction. Uh, yeah, so Freeholder, I'm glad you brought that up because the other big thing at last night's meeting, I mean, it was a long one, but uh, one of the many other things at last night's meeting was that they uh, increased the parking fees from a dollar an hour to two dollars an hour in the business district and you know the Hoboken Chamber of Commerce and some others have said that this will be uh, you know help the churn of the business I believe is the term that they kept saying last night it passed 5-4 obviously a narrow vote and you know we're gonna move forward and, but uh, this is one of a handful of parking increases that have come this month part of the reason due to a budget deficit which we'll get into more detail but your take on, uh, on that I don't agree with it I think that uh, everything seems to be making revenues for the parking authority. And, uh, you know, between the narrowing of the streets, uh, the lengthening of the bus stops, the increasing of fees, and the, I think the next attempt is going to be to increase the parking fee. I think uh, that if that is on top of the special improvement tax, plus hopefully not a city tax raise, is a little too much in, uh, f to happen at once. Uh, as far as the idea of it improving business, well, I want to see empirical data that shows that that's going to improve, uh, improve business. You cannot keep uh, increasing fees when you have so many vacant storefronts and uh, so many stores that have moved out, chain stores. So I, what's the correlation? I mean, how do you assume, uh, I'd like to know the reasoning, maybe you could tell me, of why an increase in parking is going to, uh, to help the businesses. Yeah, sure. So just like in a sentence, uh, the transportation director, Ryan Sharp, uh, <laughs> of course you know, he said that 
If the parking rates, the metered rates in front of the stores and along Washington Street are raised, the employees will be more inclined to use the lots. And if they're more inclined to use the lots, that'll open up X amount of spaces. I think 100 was the example he used for the eight hours or so of the business day. Well, that's the same logic that's been used going back under uh, Mayor Zimmer. So they've raised the rates. Where is that helping the business? So I don't see it. And I look at it from a few different perspectives as an elected official, as a business owner, and uh, as a uh, former police captain, uh, that I think that the emphasis should be on what can we do to entice people to, to come here and shop. Uh, for example, during the Christmas season, they used to be, uh, as in other cities, they would be uh, issuing of uh, almost Christmas uh, greetings instead of tickets for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Instead here, um, in the past under Mayor Zimmer, they were issuing tickets right up until Christmas Eve. So uh, I'd love to have discussions with uh, Director Sharp on his uh, initiatives. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I think it has to be spoken with a group of business people, see how they feel, and hopefully that the mayor and the council will, you know, listen to the people that uh, it, it impacts on the most. Well, like I said, it was approved, but as we've seen in the past, you know, uh, we've seen rate increases go on the books and then get pulled back almost as quickly. So we'll see how long this one lasts. Uh, but uh, free to the other thing, I mean, of course, one of the main reasons we're having this conversation is we've heard that this budget shortfall could be anywhere from $7.5 million to as high as $14 million. You know, last night, Councilwoman Fisher said with uh, some added revenues from payment in lieu of taxes, pilot agreements, it's looking at about 128. The administration, as far as I can tell, is staying steadfast at 7.4 to 7.5. Either way, it's a multi-million dollar deficit, and it's, I think it's pretty safe to say we're going to see it, both a tax increase and some city layoffs. So, I mean, what's your take on all of uh, this happening, certainly uh, heading into the spring, and then when they vote on the budget? Well, no one uh, wants to see anyone ever lose their job under any circumstance. And hopefully the mayor and the council can find a solution where no one does lose their job, either through some maybe early retirement incentives or some union givebacks. And obviously, if any, anything I could be a part of to help that situation, I gladly would volunteer my time. Um, I remember when we had in the police department the demotions and the threat of layoffs. So it, it's not a good feeling. You don't like to see that. I don't know uh, the budget well enough to say, well, where, where did, how did it get to that point where you're, you're in that much of a, a situation. But this is another reason why you need the projects like the uh, rail yard um, and the uh, hotel t to start, you know, because they'll bring in rateables. Um, uh, where is that gap from? What is causing that? I mean, all of a sudden for it to happen, um, what, did you, what did you get information that it's coming from? Well, they talked about uh, that health uh, insurance costs have gone sky high in the past couple of years. They have talked about contract negotiations with the six labor unions, and uh, basically everything's just uh, coming to a head at once. Well, as far as what we, we've changed already uh, in, in uh, the last few years, three different medical plans from when um, uh, we had as, as police officers. So uh, if we're changing again, you know, what, what is the you know, reason? You work because of the medical coverage. Um, and you need that, obviously. And I'm saying that now from a personal standpoint, um, that uh, it's important to have that medical coverage. And I'm sure that the, um, the unions will work with the mayor and the council. But does that just solve the problem? Could it just be that? I just can't believe it's just the unions and the, and the health care. There's got to be more. I mean, um, for example, the park, Dawn Zimmer's park is up to 90 million, correct? I don't know that number, but yes, it's in the multi-millions. It's high okay. for sure. You know, I mean, I would rather see uh, less of a park than more layoffs. I think it's important to, um, you know, complete your park, but within reason. Um, you know, people, the most important resource of any organization is its personnel. True. So uh, I think that that's where my heart is. So Stick, before you leave, uh, just wanted to point out that certainly you and the board have gotten some flack every year that the county increases have gone up, which was quite a few years in a row, but this, it's decreased this year, right? For last, at least. last year it was a decrease. Uh, this year it's a decrease. And I'd like to say 
A lot of people don't realize a lot of the services that the county provides to Hoboken. And uh, in fact, we're trying to even do more to help Hoboken with some of their um, uh, uh, financial difficulties now, shared services. And uh, I'm going to be rolling up my sleeves working with the mayor and the council to see how we can always uh, do more for Hoboken. But, uh, and it's unfair because a lot of people don't understand the formula. Believe it or not, the reason that the, f that the Hoboken taxes go down is because the rateables are down. So um, what we do, do so much, I mean, I could talk to you, take another segment of your show to tell you all the different things that the county does provide. Because uh, I got to say, Tom DeGeese and, and the freeholders feel the pain of Hoboken. Now, Jersey City has risen. The taxes are risen, too. And I represent Jersey City. And, uh, you know, that's the, one of the most important things to uh, property owners is their taxes. Absolutely. And you have to try to alleviate as best you can and hold the line. I think, uh, you know, I don't know if this is, this is just a theory of mine, but I think that if people would accept a yearly raise of a small percent, so you don't wait eight or 10 years, like uh, a previous mayor in Hoboken, Dawn used to say, oh, no tax, no tax. Yeah, but all those years, if she's mayor for over eight years and you don't raise taxes, the price of everything else goes up. And whereas uh, if you get a minor raise, people wouldn't mind 50 cents a dollar. But if you hit people with a huge raise, as, as being talked about now, I think that's the, the difficulty. Gotcha. Roboto, Hoboken Freeholder Anthony Roboto, always a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking that out. We're not done yet. We'll be back in a moment. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201 521 9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lindhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Hudson County View, live at Uncut, John R. Heides. So as I just spoke uh, about with the Hoboken Freeholder, you guys uh, probably, or hopefully I should say, saw on our website just before I uh, got on air today that there is a story about the Hoboken uh, parking meter fees going up in the business district. They were previously a dollar an hour, now they're two dollars an hour. Uh, we had Councilman Mike DeFusco calling this a cash grab, while Third Ward Councilman Mike Russo said that this was uh, basically not supported by any empirical data. Not everybody agreed with that, as uh, me and the freeholder just discussed. Uh, the Director of Transportation and Parking, Ryan Sharp, said that there was empirical data to support that. and. Uh, Fifth Ward Councilman Phil Cohen also said that there was uh, data to back this, and you can see that on our website. Unfortunately, we're running a little short on time, so I don't know if we're going to be able to show that clip to you, but that's, of course, on HudsonCountyView.com. It's our most recent story on our Facebook page, also on our Twitter feed as well. So with that, uh, we've actually already run out of time. Time flies when you're having fun. Thanks so much, everybody. It's been uh, real as always. We'll catch you next week.